Where is your faith in the midst of the storm? Stay tuned. If you have found Overcoming the Dragon Ministry to be a source of strength and help to your spiritual walk in these trying times, why not show your support today? Just $1 a month from each of our listeners will help with operating costs and keep us on the air. The Prince of Darkness is bringing his full wrath in these last days, and Overcoming the Dragon Ministry stands ready to defend the gospel and overcome his lies with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Brother Skinner relentlessly marches forward through enemy lines, tearing down Satan's strongholds and setting the captives free. Your investment in this ministry, large or small, will be rewarded in this life and the life to come. God bless you. So let us turn to the scripture. If you have your Bible... We're going to be reading from Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. And we're going to begin our reading in verse 22. Luke chapter 8, verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and water and they obey him. Reading again verse 25, And Jesus said unto them, Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Now we are living in a time where you hear people of different denominations and different cults and different organizations out there saying, This is my faith. You know, what's your faith? In fact, now they describe your religion by saying, what is your faith? But that's not what Jesus was saying when he said, where is your faith? He wasn't saying, what religion are you? He wasn't saying, what denomination are you? He's asking them, where is your faith? You have to understand where faith comes from and what faith is. The scripture says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the revealed word of God. Faith is produced by the word of God. They had been with Jesus for some time now and they've heard the words of Jesus. And so based on that, they should have had a measure of faith. Faith from his word should have been in them but they weren't using that faith. See, they had faith, but they weren't using it. And there's a lot of people today, a lot of God's people today, not using the faith that Jesus has given them through his word. And they get worried and afraid when they're in the midst of the storm, when they're in trouble. And instead of putting that faith into action, instead of exercising the faith that they have, They turn to fear and worry instead. They get their eyes on the problem. Jesus is saying to his disciples, where is your faith? God gives to you and I faith. He gives every man a measure of faith. That doesn't mean the unbeliever is given a measure of faith. That means when you are saved by God's grace, God gives to you a measure of faith. You have a measure of faith to start with. That 
seed, like the seed of a mustard seed. You have that faith beginning in your heart. And it grows. The more you hear the word of God, the more you receive the word of God and understand the word of God, the more understanding you have of the truth, the more you comprehend the truth, the more faith you will have and confidence you will have. Not in yourself, but in God. See, God is the one that calms the storm, not you. God's not giving you something to work aside from him. He's giving you something so that you can believe him. Are you listening? God is the one that calms the storm, brother and sister, but you got to put your faith in him. You've got to use that faith that he's given to you, that confidence he's given to you. That's that confidence you have in him, not in yourself, not in people, not in the situation you're going through. Are you listening? Now, Jesus didn't say that you could move mountains. He said you could speak to a mountain and it would be removed. If you have faith, the grain of a mustard seed. You could speak to this mountain and it would be cast into the sea. Does that mean that you have the power to do those things? No, it means you have the faith to believe God to do those things. God is the one that moves mountains. God is the one that does the impossible. He's the miracle worker. Amen. Jesus said when he comes, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This idea today that you and I can operate outside of God, this idea that we're small gods and that we can do things outside the will of God, that we can do things with our own power. We don't have power, brothers and sisters. Amen? You and I do not have a power that's aside from God's power. You and I can't heal. You and I can't deliver. Amen? But we can put that faith that God gave to us because of his word being revealed to us. Amen? That revealed word of God has produced confidence in us for God. Confidence in God, not in ourselves. Confidence in Him, in His ability, in His power. Amen? And then when you believe God to do something and He does it, amen, then you have rejoicing. And you can rejoice because God has worked on your behalf. The idea that you and I can calm storms, the idea that you and I can walk on water, the idea that you and I can heal the sick and cast out devils. You and I can't do that, but the power of God can do that, brothers and sisters. I've had opportunities where tornadoes would be coming into our area and it was headed right for our house. And my children were standing there watching their daddy pointing at that storm and rebuking it in the name of Jesus. And they watched the storm go right around our house. Does that mean that I had power? Does that mean that Brother Joseph stopped the storm from hitting our home? No, that means that I put my confidence in the God of heaven that can move mountains. Hallelujah. I spoke to that storm with the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not my own authority, but the power of God that he is invested in me through faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This generation wants to do things on their own. This generation wants to take glory unto themselves. This generation wants to say, watch what I can do. But there are some true believers on the earth that give God all the glory, that look to God for their help, that look to God for their deliverance, that look to God as their provision, that look to God to do the impossible for them. And God gets all the glory, praise the Lord. They were looking at Jesus and saying, what manner of man is this? They couldn't understand that this was not a man in their midst. This was the son of God. This was God in their midst, praise the Lord. They said, what manner of man is this? This is not a man. Jesus is not just a man. To all out there that try to say that Jesus is just a man, 
No, he's not just a man. He's not on the same level as quote unquote Muhammad. No, he's not on the level of any man. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ, the son of God. Hallelujah. No beginning, no end. This is the son of God asleep on this boat. Praise the Lord. And when they went to him and they, they called him and cried unto him and, and asked him to save them. This was not just a man that arose and rebuked the storm. This is God. Amen. But yet God didn't say to them, how come you didn't come to me sooner? Jesus didn't say, how come you didn't come to me sooner? Jesus didn't say, how come you didn't wake me up sooner? Jesus didn't say, why are you afraid? Because you didn't come and wake me up. No, Jesus said, where is your faith? In other words, you didn't have to wake me up. You didn't have to come and wake me up. You could have let me sleep and you could have rebuked the storm. You could have took authority over that storm and you could have let me sleep. The Bible says, don't wake up God. Amen. The Bible says, don't wake up his wrath. The Bible says, don't wake up the anger of God. The Bible says to let God sleep, to let his anger sleep. How many know that unbelief and doubt makes God angry? It makes God sad. It breaks his heart because God can do anything brothers and sisters but you and I will run to the doctors we'll run to the hospitals but we won't put our trust in God to heal us we won't believe God to eradicate that cancer we won't believe God to do the impossible in our life and that makes God angry that saddens God's heart people you don't want to make God sad because you break God's heart and the next thing is his wrath is coming. You don't want God to have a broken heart. You don't want God to begin weeping. You don't want God to have tears coming down his face. You want to, you, you want to, you don't want to wake up the wrath of God, brothers and sisters. We better start using the faith that God has given us through his word. Amen. Or we're going to wake up the wrath of God. Jesus was kind, he was gentle, he's long-suffering. Are you listening? When Jesus said to them, where is your faith? He was rebuking them. And yes, he was rebuking them in love. But there are many times where Jesus, it says Jesus upbraided them in their unbelief. He called them fools on the road of Emmaus. He said, where, he says, he said, who is this you're talking about? As he was walking to them with them on the way, he said, Oh, fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had said. This was the Son of God walking with them. He was right there walking beside them, and they didn't recognize him. They had more faith in that the, that the fact they believed that he was still in the grave or that he was dead, and he's alive, and he's walking with them. How many know Jesus Christ is not dead? He's alive and he's walking with us. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. A lot of us today, we think, well, there's no hope. Jesus is walking right beside us. Oh, there's no hope. No, he's dead. Haven't you ever heard? Haven't you heard that? That this man, Jesus, we thought he was the Christ. We, you know, and, and now he's dead. We thought he was the Messiah. We thought he was going to deliver us. And he's dead. He's gone. Jesus said, oh, fools. Slow of heart to believe. They constrained him to come and abide with them, to have a meal with them. And as they were in his midst, while he was sitting them with them, breaking bread, They beheld and they saw him and they knew who he was and he disappeared out of their sight. How many know Jesus does not want you and I putting our faith in flesh and blood? Are you listening? Jesus didn't want them to put their trust in him as a physical being. All the time he was on the earth, he was trying to get the people to believe that he's not a man, that he's God. So these men go running, trying to tell the others, we just had an appearance or some would call it an epiphany. And we just had this vision or we, you know, this man, and they wouldn't have believed it anyway. So Jesus says, you know what? I'll go and appear myself before them because they're not going to believe those men when they come anyway. 
And while they were there, running into the midst of the people to tell them what Jesus himself stood in their midst. Hallelujah. Praise God. Why is it we're so quick to not believe? Why is it that we're so quick to to doubt God's word, brothers and sisters, instead of being quick to believe? Because there is a war, there is a battle that's trying to get you and I not to believe God. There's a storm of unbelief and doubt. Amen? The disciples were out in the storm of a physical storm. But what about the storm that's against you and I in this hour? It's not a physical storm. What about the storm of unbelief and doubt that comes to try to get us not to believe God? You and I can't get in a place where we open ourselves up to unbelief and doubt, brothers and sisters. Amen? In the storm of unbelief and doubt, you and I need to recognize that God has given to us faith. And faith is not just some figment of an imagination. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's substance, brothers and sisters. It is, it will manifest, praise God. If you have real faith, you will have what you ask for, if it's real faith. If you ask for something and it's real faith, when you ask, you'll have what you ask for. If it's not real faith, you won't have it. It's that simple. If you really have faith, then it's like you have a check. And you can sign your name to it and you can cash that check. It's money in the bank. But if you don't have a word from God, you don't have money in the bank, brothers and sisters. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're writing bad checks. And there's a lot of people today writing bad checks, thinking God is going to make good on their check. God never gave you what you think you have. If he really gave you a backing to that check, then it would be good. Are you listening? It would be a good check. It wouldn't bounce. I'm not talking about physical checks here. You know what I'm talking about if you're spiritually minded. There's a lot of people today writing bad checks, not because God is not true to his word, but because you're not uh, looking for money from the bank account or the resources of God. You're looking at your own bank account. I remember the other day, the Lord said to me, he says, use what you have in your bank account. Now I am speaking of physical money. And I was saying, well, Lord, you know, I want to keep something in the bank. I don't want to use it all. I want to have something in there for a rainy day. The Lord says, use what you've got. I says, but Lord, I, I got to keep something in the bank. What if something happens or, you know, I, the car breaks down? What if, he said, use what you got. Use what you got. See, that's not the way we think, brothers and sisters. You and I have been so programmed by this generation or this world, this age, that we believe we got to put away money or we got to have life insurance. We got to have something for a rainy day. And the Lord says, no, use what you got. Live one day at a time. And so what God was saying was, Joseph, I'll put more in there. I'll help you get more. Just use what you got. In other words, what God was saying to me, brothers and sisters, he was saying, don't put your trust in what you have. Put your trust in me and I'll give you more. And that's what we do. We put our trust in what we have instead of the one that can give us more. Are you listening? Jesus wasn't just saying to them, where is your faith? He was saying, where is your faith? And the faith that's connected to the source and the supply of more faith. God doesn't want you and I looking to only what we have. He wants us to look to him. That's why Jesus said, consider the branch in the vine. Amen. He wants us to be hooked up. He wants us to be abiding in him. He doesn't want you and I just to be a deposit place where he deposits faith into us and that all we do is just pull from the resources of what we have. He wants you and I to get eventually to the place where we're like that branch abiding in the vine, where we don't have any more ebb, where there's 
a constant flow, amen, where we get connected with God, where there's an endless supply, praise God, of faith, where there's an endless supply, amen, where we never lack, praise God, where we never, ever have an ebb again, where there's always a flow, praise the Lord, where we have a constant flow, hallelujah, from the supply of heaven, all we have need of, and everybody around us has need of, you and I can tap into that, Praise God, we can abide in Him, in all we ask for in Him, in Him, in Christ Jesus, through faith, hallelujah. We'll have what we ask for. We limit God, brothers and sisters. We limit God. We've got to stop limiting the Holy One of Israel. We've got to stop limiting the Almighty God. We've got to stop looking at our circumstance. We've got to stop looking at our problems. And we got to start looking to the one that is the answer. We got to start looking to the one that is bigger than our problems. We got to start looking to the one that cannot fail. We got to look to the one, hallelujah, that promised he'll do exceeding, abundant, above all that we could ever ask or think, hallelujah. We need to put our, our trust and our faith in God. No, that's not true. That's not a true statement. See, that's a lie. We don't put our trust and our faith in God. It's already in God. Because if you're operating in real faith, in real trust, real confidence that comes from God, you're already operating in faith that's in God. See, the devil comes along and he says, you got to put your faith in God. No, that's not true. If you have real faith, it's already in God. Because there is no faith outside of in God. You see the difference, people. The devil's trying to get you and I to conjure up something that's outside of God and put it in God. That's not the word of God, praise the Lord. Jesus said, have the faith of God. Hallelujah. They asked Jesus one day, they said, Jesus, how do we work the works of God? And Jesus didn't say, well, you got to do this, that, and the other. No, he said, believe. That's how you work the works of God. Amen. Jesus said, the works that I do, I'm not doing these works. He said, it's the Father that's working. In other words, Jesus said, I can have my own self do nothing. He said, it's the Father working. Jesus wasn't opening the blind eyes and the deaf ears and raising the dead. Jesus wasn't the one that was cleansing lepers. Jesus isn't the one that did those things, people. Jesus said the Father did those things. Hallelujah. And you and I must realize we can't do those things either. It's God that heals the sick. It's God that raises the dead. It's God that does the impossible. It's God that delivers from sin. It's God that raises the dead. It's God that does those things brothers and sisters it's God that moves mountains hallelujah you and I can't move mountains you and I can't calm storms but I know one that can hallelujah do you know that he can see the devil doesn't want you to hear this message he doesn't want you to hear this truth he wants you to fumble around he wants you to toil he wants you to get worried and fearful and fretting he doesn't want you to believe God he doesn't want you to Realize that you have something more powerful inside of you that's more powerful than any nuclear weapon. You have something inside of you that's so powerful and explosive that it can literally turn the world right side up. Not upside down, but right side up. They accused of the apostles of turning the world upside down. No, they were trying to straighten things out. God was using them to straighten things out and turn things right side up, not upside down. The world's already upside down, amen? It's falling apart. But when you have a man of God come on the scene, it's to line things up. It's to get things to become stabilized. It's to get things to become established, praise God. It's to get things right and corrected, praise God. Oh yeah, now they're trying to say liberalism is a sickness. No, liberalism is liberty. It's liberty, praise the Lord. Don't listen to their lies. The storm that's coming from the devil trying to get people to believe that if they believe in freedom and liberty that they are the problem. Communists coming along 
trying to say, you don't want freedom. You don't want liberty. You don't want your constitution. You don't want the rights that God has given to you. No, you want bondage. You want dictatorship. You want the Antichrist. Brothers and sisters, it's time to stand up and it's time to believe God. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberation. There is liberty. There is power. There is deliverance. There is salvation. Hallelujah. We need to begin to believe God. Take Him at His word. Hallelujah. It's time for God's people, amen, to rise and shine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get this message to somebody that you love. Give this message to somebody in a nursing home. Get this message out to someone that needs to be encouraged. They need to put their faith in God. Hallelujah. God is the one that calms the storms. Praise the Lord. It's God that does it. It's not you and I that do it. You and I can't do anything without Jesus. He said, without me, you can do nothing. But I can do all things, Paul said, through Christ, which strengthens me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah to God. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can of my own self do nothing, but I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. If Jesus himself said, I can of my own self do nothing, then why do you and I think we can do something? Now, that's not talking about doing your job and and tying your shoes and brushing your teeth. No, you can do that. But he's talking about working miracles. He's talking about raising the dead. He's talking about the impossible things in our life. Are you listening, people? God does the impossible. You can brush your teeth. God doesn't have to brush your teeth for you. God doesn't have to tell you to brush your teeth. God doesn't have to tell you to tie your shoes. God doesn't have to tell you to use your brains when you're on the road driving your car and you need to be uh, aware of other people on the road and be safe. God doesn't have to tell you that. No, you should know that. Are you listening? But if you're going down the road and a car's coming straight for you and in the wrong lane, you need God to step in and deliver you, brothers and sisters. Amen. That's something you can't avoid. That's something you can't do. I know what I'm talking about. I was in that situation where I had a sports car coming straight for me and my family. I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, as that car was headed straight for us, there was no place for that car to go because there were cars on his side and he would have hit straight on with us and somehow we missed that car. And I still don't know to this day, it couldn't have happened in the natural. God jumped in there. God stepped in there. God is the one that stopped that car from hitting us on Christmas Eve night. We should have been splattered all over that road. And I'm going to tell you right now as I'm closing, when God works a miracle, that's not for your natural mind to understand. God does things that this world and the science world talk about wormholes and talk about things and phenomena. God does things outside of this realm. God does things that our natural mind will never be able to figure out. Can you imagine while the disciples were standing there and the fishes and the loaves were just multiplying in front of their eyes? Can you imagine They couldn't grasp it. They couldn't understand it. They were caught up in the moment and they enjoyed it as they were giving it out. And then it got to become work and they started murmuring and complaining and they forgot about the miracle and their hearts got hardened. And Jesus said, did you forget what I did back there? Did you forget about the miracle? Because oftentimes, brothers and sisters, God works a miracle in our life and it's not long before you and I are hardening our hearts And getting under the load again and forgetting what God just did for us the day before. Even a moment before. Even just minutes ago. Like God can't do it again. God can't work another miracle for you. Or God can't do the impossible again for you. Brothers and sisters, he is the God 
of the impossible. What's impossible with man is possible with God. Starting with just simple salvation, what's impossible with man is possible with God. Hallelujah. The idea that you and I somehow have faith that's apart from God is a lie from the pit of hell. There is no such thing as faith aside from God. Faith comes from God. Faith comes through his word. Faith, real faith, cometh by hearing and hearing. Those two word hearings are different. The first hearing is just the word of God, the written scriptures, the logos. And hearing, the second hearing in that verse of scripture is the revealed word of God. Faith cometh by the revealed word of God. When God gives you a quickened word, when God quickens a word to you, it produces faith in you. And that faith is not in yourself or in the circumstance or what you're going through or in your ability. That faith is in what God can do, brothers and sisters. I I just really hope something that has been said today has encouraged you. You need to listen to this message more than once. Listen to this message until you begin to grow in faith because this, this word that I'm preaching to you is the word of faith. This word of faith that is in my mouth that I'm giving to you should produce faith in you, brothers and sisters, because I'm not just pre- pre- preaching right now the logos of God's word. I'm preaching to you the revealed word of God, the word of faith. Are you listening? and it should produce confidence in you for God. You should have more confidence in God after this message if I'm preaching to you the word of faith. Not the word of faith like Kenneth Copeland and Benny Hinn, that word of faith movement, no. Talking about the word of faith that I'm preaching to you right now. You should have more faith after listening to this message than you do before you listen to this message. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. God bless you, brothers and sisters. If you have found Overcoming the Dragon Ministry to be a source of strength and help to your spiritual walk in these trying times, why not show your support today? Just $1 a month from each of our listeners will help with operating costs and keep us on the air. The Prince of Darkness is bringing his full wrath in these last days, and Overcoming the Dragon Ministry stands ready to defend the gospel and overcome his lies with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Brother Skinner relentlessly marches forward through enemy lines, tearing down Satan's strongholds and setting the captives free. Your investment in this ministry, large or small, will be rewarded in this life and the life to come. God bless you.